seems legit. Hello Legitimates and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the Sassy Saddlebag by Mrs. H Designs. Um, I haven't quite finished um, Tory squishing it. The front's alright, but the back I haven't done yet. Um, this is really cute. So this is the small size and the pattern comes in three different sizes. It's got a slip pocket on the back. Um, for the pattern, it does actually have a magnet, but because it's the small size, I decided I didn't need one. I used a rivet magnet because I'm obsessed. Um, I put a thing of thread in there just to kind of help me when I was Tory squishing. And I've also put a zipper pocket inside as well. Uh, so if you would like to see how to make this gloriousness, please stay tuned. All right, guys, let's get started. So I have already ironed my strap. So let's start with that. Um, but we will need double-sided tape for this piece. So, lay it with wrong sides facing up, and then I'm going to grab my 12mm or half inch double-sided tape and stick a line down the middle. Now, if you're new to bag making and you can't eyeball the middle yet, that's okay, I never used to be able to either, rule a line and then stick the double-sided tape over the line is the easiest way to get that done. And then chop off the end. So I'm just going to do it a little bit at a time. I never just pull off all of this. I used to, and every single time I stick it to my table. So we just want to peel off a section. And then I'm going to pinch it together and push it down. And that would pretty much put it in the center for you. Um, it is an acquired skill. It used to take me a very long time. If you watch some of my older videos, um, I am not this fast at it. It does take time to get good, but it ultimately does become quicker. So I highly recommend learning it. And we just want to keep smoothing it down. The other thing you can do is take um, a scraper and scrape the edges. What this will do is further crease the sides so it stays down. Especially, oops, if you've got stubborn vinyl, you really want to squish that down. So we just pinch together and then push down. So I use this, these two fingers, and I'm kind of using the third one as well. So I'm squishing and then pushing down with my other hand. And then I'm going to scrape it because I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to lift up on me. So I've just cut this the width of the vinyl. Um, but you can make whatever size strap you like, really. I This is my standard size, which is 135 centimeters. I couldn't tell you what that is in inches. No idea. We're squishing and pushing and squishing and pushing all the way to the end. You can also, if it is lifting in certain places, you can just put clips there. I don't know which side works better. Oops, no, definitely the not squidgy side. So like here, I know it's going to lift. So I'm just going to put like a clip and that should stop it for the most part. Alright, so I'm going to start with the end I just finished with. Then I'm going to take this, make sure that the raw edges are tucked in. I like to do lots of different types of straps. This is just what I've landed on today. Um, you can mix and match all your straps from all your patterns. You can mix and match a lot of things, actually. Um, so I'm just going to hold it in the center and I've deliberately made the fabric a little bit smaller than the vinyl so we still get a pop of vinyl color on the top. And we're just going to bring it down, smooth it down, hold it in the center and I'm using my fingers like clips. So I'm spacing them out, holding everything in place and only moving them when I get close to the needle so that I don't sew myself. Now with these 
kind of adjustable crossbody straps. It doesn't really matter if you cut them longer or shorter. So these, both these, oh see, it's lifting. Both of these things, I just cut the full width. Uh, and one is guaranteed to be longer than the other. It's just how it always is. Um, so we will just trim them down accordingly. If it's the vinyl, we don't have to do anything to the ends. But if it's the fabric, we just have to make sure we tuck under that raw edge so that it's not sticking out. Alternatively, you could also put on a strap end and then that would hide your ends and solve that problem. As you can see, the end didn't stay stuck. Different colors have different, like of my vinyl, even though it's all the same, same brand, different colors stick better or worse with double-sided tape. I don't understand why, they just do. So, both sides down, just rub it. So see how this is going to be a bit longer? That's okay. I didn't actually tuck this edge because I knew. So I'm going to cut off just past the end of the vinyl so I can tuck under that edge. And then there's no raw edges. So I'm going to stitch down. And then across the end. And then generally speaking, this side is quicker, but as you can see, a bunch of sections have lifted, which will make it a lot less quicker than normal. Because everything's already kind of in place. Always stop with the needle down, readjust, push that under. And again, so a lot of this lifted. I could have instead put a lot of, down a lot of clips. I didn't. So now we're stuck re-sticking it. Hold it with my hands. Tuck it under. There's lifting as well. Oh, we're not having any luck. section as you get closer to this end you can either chop off those tails so they don't get tangled or you can just hold them out of the way and then get back and back stitch and so now we have a very cool strap and some random bits fluffing out the sides that's just from the raw edge of the fabric you can just go ahead. Most of the time I'll just pull out. Sometimes you will have to um, fold them out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the middle section of here like this. Now you can either rivet it down or stitch it down. Today just for something different I thought I'd stitch it. So we're going to go stitch forward, back, needle down. Pivot on the angle, down like so, pivot, and one more, and then back stitch. So I've done like this very cute little X, and that should be strong enough forever. This is a very strong thread, this is an M40, which is the same as a Tex 70 for those in America. Ow, that was hot. So now we've got a cute little X that holds it down. So what we are going to do is we're going to go through this rectangle ring. And then go up one side and down the other. Because this needs to go into the main bag. And this will have another strap on it as well. So let's grab the other strap, which is this piece here. And again, even though it's little, we are still going to put double-sided tape down the center to hold it all in place. 
peel it back, fold it to the center. Now the other option, you have options here. You don't have to cut it wide and fold it to the center. You can cut two pieces the same size. It just means you'll have raw edges on both sides. So stitch, back stitch, over, flip it around, jump to the other side and top stitch. We're not gonna see the ends of this. It'll be tucked in to here like this. I'm just gonna put a clip on that. And so now the strap is ready to install in the bag. So let's put that aside. I did make one small alteration to this pattern. For the gusset, I'm just making sure there's no pattern sizings. The outside is cut as the um, pattern says. The inside, however, because I wanted the flowers to be directional, I've cut them just that little bit longer so that I now have a seam allowance to join them together like so. Now, you probably can't see it, but very faintly there's a line. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, that is the seam allowance line that I gave myself so that I could do it the way I want. Okay. So I'm just going to stitch along that line, making sure that everything's lined up. Stitch, back stitch. So now that is the same line. So that is something that isn't in the pattern, but now I get to have my flowers go the way I want. I'm gonna just finger press that open. You can also stitch it down if you wish, uh, but that's that bit done. All right, let's move on to, what have we got? This is the slip pocket, I believe, because there's only one together. So I'm going to put these right sides together and I always put the lighter fabric face down under the machine. Um, that way the feed dogs will help carry it through evenly. So I'm gonna stitch, back stitch, and off I go. And back stitch again. And that was the end of the bobbin. I knew that was coming too. That's why we did the strap very, very first when I prepared earlier. Earlier as in right before this video, because sometimes I do actually remember. Ah. Grab a tail. Now because this is a fresh bobbin, I am not going to backstitch this first bit. So fold that back. I always like to finger press it down. Then you can fold it over and pinch it. And then without an iron, you should get a nice crisp line to top stitch. I'm gonna go up to a top stitching length today. I'm just gonna do three and a half. Oh, don't do it. Nope. I can hear it misbehaving. Chop all that off. Pull the bobbin out and check it. See, it gave a loop. I'm cursed with this bobbin every time. Didn't even backstitch yet. All right, let's try that again. So I'm gonna hold on to these tails. Apparently that's what you're meant to do. I just never do it. There we go. Line up that edge, stitch along. And we can backstitch now. We want to take this and attach it to our, no, that's the flap, to one of our back pieces, which are here. So you can pick whichever one you like the least, I guess, or which one you want to be the front and which one the back. I've cut them both pretty awesomely, so I'm going to just do this one. So we're just gonna line it up. It should be the same size since it's a similar pattern piece. And I'm just going to tack that down. Now the pattern does say to put a magnet. If you were doing the medium or the large size, I would probably need a magnet. But for this small size, I'm not going to do it. 
um, not because I'm lazy or anything, just because I don't think it needs it for such a small pocket. If it was the biggest size, I could see why. And I'm just stitching that on within the seam allowance to make it now be a single piece. And then this one will be my front. Alright, so let's grab another bit. Let's do our flap. So I scented the, I don't even know what it is, but it's like a spiky dragon. I deliberately put him in the middle because I thought it was super cool. Um, and with my accent, because I'm doing vinyl, I don't plan on tucking under the edge. I'm just going to stitch it on as is. So what I did for the pattern piece is there's a fold. I did the fold so I didn't have the join in the center. That was just my choice. You can It'll waste less vinyl if you do the two pieces in half. Um, but I decided to do it this way. So if you've got the two half pieces, you will just need to join it in the center. Much like I did the gusset piece for the lining. So we're just going to put some double sided tape because this is going to hold it in place for us. I'm not being super fancy with it. Near enough is good enough with double sided tape. The other option that you have is you could use fabric glue and glue it down but please wait until it's dry so you don't get glue all up in your machine. Nobody wants that. Okay. So we measure that to there and to there and then as we go around the edge it should all fit beautifully. So I'm still on the joining stitch length so let's now go and do the inner edge first then I'll do the outer one. So I'm going to do it with an eighth of an inch seam like from the edge of the vinyl. You want to get close but not so close that you're going to fall off the edge. And you want to go slowly around this big curve there. It won't feel as big on the bigger size bag, but because this is the small one, it might feel a lot bigger. Okay. See? Dragon's right in the middle. So now, I'm actually going to, because you're supposed to fold over edges and stuff, I'm actually going to stitch it this way, just along the outer edge. So I'm still top stitching, I didn't even bother to back stitch. Doesn't matter if this isn't neat, although it is a good way to practice. And the reason I did that is because I could feel, and it turns out it was only in that corner. See how I cut it incorrectly? Should have been scooched over a little bit. That's right. Oh, what is going on with my bobbin now? <sighs> Nothing but drama today. It should be tight enough that you can hold it without unraveling. <sighs> Luckily, we won't see those stitches because that's atrocious. Look what it's done. Make sure that everything is done up correctly. That's all right. We won't see it, so it's fine. Let's grab our lining piece. Line it. Actually, I want to trim off that little bit there. Just so it's even. There we go. So now I'm going to take clips and I'm going to have lining side down for the clips because it's the lighter of the two pieces. So I want it under the feed dogs. stitches. See, it's all stitching nice. So I made my top stitch a little bit lighter and then I just um, pulled out the bobbin because that's usually the problem. Bobbin's 9 out of 10 of my problems. Oh, drop my scissors. 
grab my awesome now skull lasered scissors. We're going to do zigzag scissors and then cut this curve because it's a curve and zigzag scissors help it to flex the best. So if you make a lot of curved bags, it would be wise to invest in some zigzag scissors so that you're not spending the next however long putting little nicks all the way around the corner. Or cor any curve actually, not even a corner. In the bin. Flip her through. Oh, see, I love it with yellow as well. I love it with brown. I love it. I'm gonna do it with red, by the way. We've still got another one to go. I just like pairing it with all the colours. So this colour vinyl, by the way, is canary that I stock on my website. And it is quite a thick vinyl, uh, but I like it. it. Doesn't require interfacing. Now, you might be wondering why am I pinching and clipping this? See how it's not sitting on its edge? The clips are gonna hold it there. Or you could go across and like squish it the whole way. It does help, but clips help too, so. Your bag can't handle a little manhandling now. It probably can't handle being overstocked with things. So it, it can't hurt to give it a little bit of hell now. And yes, I'm being excessive with my scissors. I don't want my lining to roll to the front. That would be rude. Okay, now we can top stitch. Up to a top stitching length. Always a good idea. I can hear it giving me grief. Okay, here we go. If you can get it going in one smooth flow, the stitches always seem to look nicer than if I have to stop and start. I have found. Steady will literally always win the race. Always. Flip it over, check our uh, bobbin, make sure it hasn't misbehaved the whole time. Now, I plan on using rivet magnets, so I don't need to install mine yet. Uh, but if you're not, my suggestion would be to install them now. done now I've got to do a zipper pocket so you need one of your lining pieces and your zipper pocket piece um, I have decided to basically do a shorter version of a Tory pocket because that's pretty close to what it was um, let's see clips pattern pieces so first thing I'm gonna do I've already drawn my rectangle so I'm just gonna fold this in half Find the center of the half where the rectangles are drawn. And then I'm gonna find the center of this. We're gonna need it anyway, so that we can um, put on our gusset. So now's as good a time as any. So I'm just going to lay this one, whoops, right sides down, so right sides together. And I'm putting it in the center and so that my corners are just touching here because we don't want it too high up. We've still got seam allowance and stuff. You could probably go as high as about there. 
I wouldn't go any higher. And we're going to go to adjoining stitch length. Um, I can feel my machine misbehaving. Alright, needle down in the corner, stitch, back stitch. All the way to the end of the long one, and then we're going to rotate 180 degrees. Go back the other way, just on the long lines. We no longer stitch the short lines. Trim, trim, trim. Trim off all of those. So then I'm going to grab some scissors. I've got my mine scissors. Should have probably taken out the question mark, but it's fine. They are still very cute scissors and I love them. And other side. So we're just triangling out these ends. And we're going to turn the bag through this pocket. So we're not going to stitch up the bottom either. Now this will require some ironing because it is fabric on fabric, um, but it doesn't hurt to finger press it first. It never hurts. Good finger press. Alright, so I'm going to go iron that and I'll be right back. Alright, we're going to iron nice and flat and I've got uh, zipper tape. This colour matches perfectly, just saying. So, we need to install our zipper. I like to just crack mine a little bit. I don't like it too far. But you can do it however you like. I know a lot of people have zipper like things to help them install the zippers. They are amazing. I used to use one all the time. I had it um, attached to my table and it would swing in and out of the way. So I'm just going to lay this directly over it. And I'm going to go in front of the zip. So the zip's closing this way and I'm going to come and start in front of it like this. Not going to back stitch, one of those rare times when I don't, because we're going to go back and finish where we started. So now that I'm back to the zipper, I'm going to take it and zip it forward. And now it hasn't been in my way the whole time of sewing around the zipper, which is nice. Knead it down, get it across. When we get back to the start, we overlap like two or three of the stitches and then back stitch, and that locks in the first and the last stitches all at once. Trim off those tails, and then I'm going to fold this down in half and just stitch the sides. We're going to leave the bottom open because that's where the bag's coming through. Stitch, back stitch, and down we go. And then other side, so the bottom edge should line up. What I actually did was like cut a Tory pocket and then cut it down to fit inside the small size. Um, it would probably fit just fine in the larger sizes, but they do also have a pocket in the pattern. So, while I've already got this bit, I am going to open this. And I am also going to slightly shove the pocket through the hole. And you might think I'm crazy, but I don't want to accidentally stitch it in the seam allowance. So by having it like this, it can't get there. Now, I already know where the center is because I've got a seam, but if you just did a continuous inside, you need to find the center and clip it down. And then I'm gonna do three clips either way of the center to hold it in place and then we're going to come up to this side here and start at the top edge and work our way down. Now this whole thing is a curve um, so you might have to hold it as such to make it all fit in nicely. All right? So hold it as the 3D object it is. It will help when clipping. A super duper promise. 
it will help you ease everything in the way you want to. And clip. Then we're going to come up and do the other side. So I'm going to start at this edge here. Clips facing the gusset. I'm also going to trim off my extra little bit of zipper so that it's not in my way. Line up the edge, clip it down. So again, I'm going to use my thumbs and push out the shape so it sits where I want and then we're just going to clip it in place. Like that. And lots of clips is fine. I've used heaps because it is pretty much a continuous curve. So now I'm going to stitch and back stitch. Try and make sure that this sits down flat as well. I had to stop and lift up the um, presser foot it was kind of a misbehave on me. And then backstitch, because we always backstitch. Wow, that's a lie, technically. We nearly always backstitch. Then from the inside, you want to check and make sure it looks nice. And if you're happy, grab your zigzag scissors again. And you can also let this out now because we're not going to accidentally stitch it in anymore. We're done. Um, it was just so that we don't accidentally have to unpick everything to get the pocket out because that's where we're turning stuff through. Nobody wants to play that game. I promise. I might see if my husband can sharpen these. I might Google how to sharpen them. They're just, I mean, I've had them for ages and they have gone through hell. I am going to continue. If you don't have zigzag scissors, you can come along like this and just put little snips all the way through so it curves nicely. Um, I'm very clearly not going to do that because I have the scissors, even if they do want to fight me. Oh, mate. Right. One half. Done. Now let's attach the other half. Um, you can put a slip pocket or another zipper pocket or whatever you like on this side if you want more pockets. But because I've done the small, and this is quite a, like a small cute little bag, I personally decided it doesn't need any more pockets. Um, but if you're making the bigger sizes, I'll probably definitely put some more pockets in. But that's just me. Alright. Clips always facing the gusset. Start up here. Clip. And then hold this into the shape. Like so. And it should all just work out. Right, and then other half. It's starting to take shape as a cute little bag now. All right, and then, so I always like to push this out and then clip it in place. I find it easier, uh, but you can do it however you like. And my thumbs kind of bend the right way to help push it all out to be even. And yes, I am using a lot of clips on this. We will probably use even more on the exterior, which we're gonna do in a second. All right, gusset right sides up. Temporarily move my scissors. We're gonna stitch. We're gonna back stitch. Now I did not need to do that many back stitches, but I was trying to avoid it getting caught like it has every other time. 
I've just changed the needle plate, so the plate and the feed dogs this morning. Um, I just changed the plate yesterday, but apparently the old feed dogs and the new feed dogs are slightly different. Um, and I just haven't fine-tuned all my settings yet. The old plate was very, very bent. If you're not in my Facebook group, it was outrageously bent, actually. It's been stabbed one too many times with a needle, I believe. Ah, oh, come on. The other reason we do this, not just for the curve, but we want to take off some of this seam allowance so that the lining will tuck nicely into the exterior without the um, this part hitting the edge and then not nestling in nicely. So it is always a good idea to trim it down. Um, curves and zigzags are just better. But as you can see, I am fighting with my scissors. There's just like one blunt tooth, I think, messing up the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna turn this right sides out because that's how I always do it. Then let's do the same to our exterior pieces. So I did put foam on this. Um, I cut mine in half because I was trying to, you know, space save and all that. I am just going to nick the vinyl very slightly in the center on both sides because that's the easiest way to find the center and then we're going to do the same to our pockets and I'm going to use bigger scissors for this because that's got many more layers and then this one Okay, so this one's the back with the pocket and this one's the front. It doesn't matter which one you do first. Uh, actually, I might do the front first. So I'm going to line up that center point, put a clip in. Again, the clips will face the gusset piece. Facing out like so. And then this will either be way easier or way harder depending on your skill level and how bendy this is. Mine's quite firm, it's actually going quite well. It was quicker than the lining, which I did not see coming. You could also, if you wanted to, add piping into this seam. I don't have any ready, so we're not doing that, but it is a thought. Uh, if you're watching this video contemplating making this bag, this would be very cute with piping right here. Um, or you could even do a faux piping. A faux piping is where you just um, like lay your stuff in half and it just sticks out of the seam. It doesn't have the piping cord inside, but still gives a very similar effect. Food for thought. Alright, let's do this. Me and my zigzag scissors are not going to try and fight this seam today. Now I am stitching and back stitching more than normal, again, because it seems to be working today for me. because it's all vinyl and thicker I am just going to get normal scissors and cut it down because I'm not fighting with it today I'm just not interested and some people might ask well why don't you just do a lesser seam allowance that does work sometimes um, but sometimes with curves you actually want that little bit extra because it makes it easier to do. Um, so by all means, you could go across all your patterns and take off that much of like a quarter inch of the seam allowance or whatever. But it, 
might not work out as handy as you think. It might turn out to be a lot more trickier to sew. The seam allowance is basically like a leeway to allow you to still make the bag. So if you took that away, you might struggle a bit more. That's all. Like for example, I don't ever take it off patterns. I like it there. It's like a security blanket of space. Is a really good way to look at it. And that security blanket of space allows me to sew faster. So no, I would not take it off. But you could, is where I was going with that train of thought. Okay, other side, check. Let's go again. Tails to the back. See if it's gonna behave. Oh, look at that. scissors. These ones say snippety snip. Just cause I'm childish. <laughs> I am actually trying to source some wholesale rainbow scissors that I could custom laser engrave. Um, if anybody knows of a wholesale of rainbow scissors that I could custom laser engrave, please let me know. I'm having way too much fun with my laser engraver. Okay, now, normally I would just slot everything together and bob your uncle. However, what I need to do, because usually I don't attach the strap yet, right? But I wanna make sure that the strap's gonna behave and I'm gonna put it in the right way. So because of that, I am actually going to turn the bag out. Oh, it's so cute. And then, so this side's the flap. All right, which means this is the front of the bag. And so I need to get this the right way. So like this, and then I'm gonna clip it. I'm gonna tuck it up and clip it. Now, the more you make bags like this, the more you would be able to do it without turning it through, but I don't really wanna risk it. So I have turned it out. And I'm using two um, Wonder Clips to hold it in place because one, it can swivel, two, it can't. So that's what we want. We wanna make sure that the strap is the right way. Then we can turn it back through the wrong way. So we've got to stitch together anyway. So now that that's on, and obviously be careful not to knock it because you don't wanna knock it off. Then we shove all of the strap inside of the bag, like so. Then on the back edge, so this needs to touch the back edge. And I always like to fold these in half to shove them in the bag. Always turns out easier, I promise. All right, so we've got a lot of stuff in this bag right now. And then I'm going to clip the two edges and then along the center line, like so. So that flap is now in. Now we can take our lining. I am also going to put the zipper on the back. Actually, now let's put it on the front just for something different. Also, I have not forgotten about the magnets. Just if you're wondering, I'm using rivet magnets so I can install mine later. But just if you're following along at home going, the magnets, I promise. I've thought of them. They're just not a yet problem. All right, so I'm starting with that side. I'm making sure the corner lines up. Again, we're just kind of shoving it all inside itself. Oh, that's the wrong edge. That edge goes there. Flip, flip, and this edge. Now 
Now you could instead, I'm doing it the way the pattern actually says with the one end hanging in, you could instead just have the two um, loops on either end and attach the strap at the end. But I'm, I'm trying to do this thing where I actually follow patterns instead of just going off wildly on my own. Not that I can't do it, it's just, you know, you might want to see how it's actually done in the pattern, that's all. Okay, joining stitch length. I've made all of the clips face the inside so that when I lay it down, they're easy to pull off. So I'm just gonna start wherever. There is no right or wrong answer to where to start on these. What you do wanna make sure is even though we're going around and around, you wanna try and make sure you're getting the same seam allowance the whole way around. needle down, pull it all around, let's go again. Oh yeah. Then when you get back to the start, back stitch again. Ta-da! And yes, I have random threads poking out everywhere. Trim them up. Zigzags, oh no, not zigzag scissors, vinyl scissors. So I'm just going to, in these corners, cut out the weird bulk that is at all of those seam allowances. This is gonna help for a smoother top stitch, uh, especially if you don't have mm, the squishy vinyl squishes. I know that's not very, I'll show you. Leather tool pliers, vinyl squishes, call cool, them whatever you like. Okay, so we're gonna go through the pocket, which is why we left it open. And the first thing I always grab out is the flap. And then the second thing today I'm gonna grab is the strap because it all just kind of comes pouring out. And then look at how easy that was to turn. That was awesome. Okay, so. I actually want to have it this way out so that we can top stitch with the top on the outside. But a couple of things, this seam here, see how it's thick and bulky? And I can show you, see how it's thick, right? We're going to take these pliers, we are going to squish it down. I like to squish with two hands. And now look at how flat that is same seam. It's just outrageously thinner. I'm also going to do the same thing here. Two hands and squish. I know this seems awkward and looks really bad. It's just because we've got it inside out. We're going to keep it inside out until I've top stitched it. Alright, so again, look at how bulky that is. By squishing it with the pliers, it does become a lot nicer. And that will then make it easier to stitch over too, by the way. That's why we're doing these things. So let's go up to our decorative top stitch. Today is three and a half. You can do anywhere between three and five on an industrial. Um, I don't know, it depends on what your domestic goes up to. You can pretty much do whatever. I just like longer decorative stitches because they're pretty, literally wide. So again, I'm not going to back stitch. I'm just going to stitch around and I'm stitching an eighth of an inch off the edge or from the edge. Um, so what this means is that it is easier to fall off the edge, but it is quite pretty. So if you're new to bag making, please still do the top stitching but just do it at a full quarter inch. It won't be as difficult to manage. Also, we need to make sure we're not catching the strap as we work our way around, because it can be naughty and try and get in the way. Also, try not to knock all your clips over. Another very important moment. <laughs> Stop with the needle down, 
reassess. Now I'm going to trim off these tails from where we started so that they don't get caught up because they're nearly back to the start. Make sure you throw them in the bin. Down, needle down and around. And then, all right, so I'm back to the start. And I do a few extra stitches and back stitch it. Nothing major, you don't want to draw the eye there, but you also do just want to kind of have it there. And then you can turn your bag out the proper way. Now, I can see, see it's not beautifully curved. That's a Tory squish problem. Um, I usually do this right at the end though. So we can just basically ignore it for a minute. Now we just need to install our magnets, right? And then we'll stitch up the pocket. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want the magnet to be here as an accent, but I don't want it to be inside. Um, so to prevent that, we will just do it through the pocket. And yes, I could have done it earlier. No, I didn't. And that's okay. So first thing we're gonna need is our hole punch. And find the center of the pocket. So you can just kind of literally fold it in half. And then even with a normal pen, just do a little mark. It's gonna be hidden anyway. That pen's not working terribly well. So all that drawing gave me the world's smallest mark, but that's all right. So I'm going to squish the hole all the way through. Grab my rivet magnet. I'm going to need the dies as well. Now I'm going to install the flatter or the nail here. So I'm going to pop that on and then we just need to get our other dies. So I'm going to have both of mine going. This is just normal rivets. We need magnet rivets. Uh, these do come in large and small. small magnets very often uh, but I did still get myself all of it because you never know and squish Ta -da! so now that's like a cute little accent on the outside another thing you could do is you could put rivets all the way along here and have it like more of a grungy bag it wouldn't suit this particular fabric but I could definitely see that with like some skulls or something. Now the reason I'm making sure the bag sits properly before I measure the other hole is because we don't want anything to pull it down the wrong way. So that's where I want it. So I can squish it now. I know where I'm going. There. And again, pen's not really my friend today. So I'm going to pull the lining so I'm touching it and I'm going to hang this off the edge just a little bit, bring the bag up and hole punch. Now the other thing I did, and I've dropped it on the floor, I did this earlier. I All my little scraps of base stabilizer, I cut into one inch strips, punch a hole in it and this will just give us an extra layer of stability inside the magnet. All right, so we put the magnet in, then we feed this onto the back, then we put this one on, and we also have to switch out our dies. So we just switch out the bottom one, easy peasy lemon squeezy, and then I'm gonna go this way and then switch. See the inside one? You could have it so you could see the inside rivet. It's just today I decided not to. Alright, and now all we need to do is stitch the pocket closed, Tori squish the bag, and we're done. So grab it, tuck it under, get rid of random fluff, which seems to be everywhere. So I just tuck the raw edges in approximately a knuckle's worth. Um, that's my official measurement for that. You can also iron it um, exactly however much seam allowance you want. Just 
just got to remember the larger the seam allowance you use, the smaller the pocket's going to end up. Trim off the tails, tuck it in. I always like to push those corners all the way out so it's nice. Zip it up and then I like to stand over my bag and push everything out. And then over we go. And again, it needs a Tory squish, but that's all right. One bag, how adorable. So this fabric does go with the yellow. Oh, it's rainy. Needs it a final iron, as you can see. Don't worry about that. I will give the bag a final iron and a squish and she is ready to go on the website. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, I do hope you make this bag. It's quite a cute shape. I like the little accent. I love a good accent though. That's just who I am. All right, guys, until next time. Bye-bye.